Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing how to prove the angle bisector theorem. So again, we are going to use a two-column proof here, just like we have been using when we do all of our other proofs. So on this side, we have our statement. And on this side, we have our reasons. Now, again, every time we do a two-column proof, we're always going to start with what we're given. So in this case, what we're given is that ray AD bisects angle BAC. And we've also been given this idea that, or let's just start there. Let's start with that. Now, what does that even mean? AD bisects angle BAC. Well, by the definition of an angle bisector, what that means is that angle BAD, oh, that says BAC, angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. Now that's what that means. Okay, so now let's check out what that other given part tells us. So segment DB is perpendicular to AB and DC is perpendicular to AC. Great, so that is also given to us. Now what does that part of our given statement tell us? Well, what that part of our given statement tells us is that the measure of angle DCA is equal to the measure of angle DBA, which equals 90 degrees. Awesome, so that's by that definition of perpendicular. Okay, so basically what we know, let's describe our picture here. On our picture here, we've got this, these lines. Now what we figured out, based on what we know, is that this angle is the same as this angle, and that this angle is congruent to this angle, okay? And we've got these pieces here that are perpendicular, right? So we have these two pieces. And what we want to figure out ultimately is I want to show that these two things are congruent. Now how do I do that? Well, right now I've shown that this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle. Now remember, to prove this, we want to use this triangle congruence pro those triangle congruence properties. And what one of them is, so we have our side angle side one, which could work here, but we have two angles, so that's not worth it. Our angle options are angle side angle or angle angle side. So to prove this, we either want to get the, to show that this side and this side are congruent, or show that this side is congruent to itself. One seems a lot easier than the other, and that's that this side is congruent to itself. And how can we prove that? Well, we can show that segment AD is congruent to segment AD by that reflexive property. Reflexive property of congruence, which basically says something is congruent to itself. Great. So by establishing that that's congruent to itself, using those three angles, we can then say that triangle CAD is congruent to triangle BAD by the angle, angle, side, triangle. That triangle was not good. Let's try a new one. Triangle congruence theorem. Which basically says if an angle, two angle, two angles and the non-included side are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so then now that we know that, let's keep going here. So remember that CPCTC thing from the perpendicular bisector theorem? Well, we're gonna use that again. So CPCTC, again, what that stands for, let's go to this other side. CPCTC. What that stands for is corresponding. parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Wow, that is so long, we cannot even write it on the same line. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCTC. So let's use that here, which basically says that if two triangles are congruent, then their parts that correspond are also congruent. So in this case, how that's going to help us is we can then say that segment D, what are the two we're looking for? Segment DB is congruent 
to segment BC by that corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Now, the very last thing we need to do is we don't want to prove that they're congruent, but we want to prove that they're equal. And so how can we prove that they're equal? Well, we can say DB equals DC. And the reason why is because by the definition of congruence, two things that are congruent are also equal in length. And that is how we prove that the angles or the angle bisector theorem is true. So if an angle is bisected, any point on that angle bisector is going to be equidistant away from the two from the two rays that it bisects. And we can use that again to figure out side lengths, angles, awesome things like that when it comes to triangles. And so the angle bisector theorem is really cool. If you haven't checked out the proof for the perpendicular bisector theorem, I'd recommend that you check it out. Again, that one also refers to that CPCTC or congruent parts of congruent triangle or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Wow, that's a mouthful. So please check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but that is how you prove the angle bisector theorem.